All right, next we're going to start setting up extensions. So before I can set up an inbound route where somebody can call me, what I need is something for them to call. So I'm going to start off with that first because when we go into the inbound route setup, I'm going to have to set up ring groups, what ring groups we ring, what extensions are included. Before we can get to any of that, we have to just set up an extension. So before I set up the extension, I want to go over the concept of what an extension is. An extension is simply going to be a phone on the network. So on a voice over IP setup, every phone is connected through the network. So just like you have computers that will then connect to a central server and you'll type in your username and your password to log in, the same concept goes with the phone. So this is not really a phone. This is actually a little computer. And inside this little com this network attached computer is a speaker, an earpiece, and a microphone. It looks like a phone, but in reality, this thing is a computer. So this is extension 401. So if I get up and I don't trip over any of the wires on the floor here, and this focuses, you'll see that it says 401 up here. That is my extension. So if anybody who's on this network dials 401, they'll reach my phone. So in order for this to actually this phone to be 401, it has to log in as 401. Now with traditional analog PBX systems, with the old types of phone systems, you would actually, you know you would wire yourself. So there would be somebody who wired up the phones in the building to make different phones, different numbers, different phones, different extensions. Here, it's all done just via basic username and password-like authentication. So when I say this is this extension, I want you to think of an extension also as a username, and I want you to think of a secret as a password, because you're very often going to see the word secret used in the, in the telephony world when we're dealing with free PBX and asterisk, and secret is very much like password. So this phone over here, this doesn't have to be extension 401. I can make it 501, I can make it 901, I can make this 101 the receptionist phone, I can make it 201, which is the salesperson's phone. That's all going to depend on what I tell the phone to do. So the first thing that the phone needs to do is connect to the PBX server and then say, this is my username or my extension and this is my password or my secret. And then the PBX will say, okay, that's the right extension, that's the right secret. Here, you are now 401. You are now Lewis's phone. Now, we're going to set up extensions first over here. So I'm going to set up all the extensions and then I'm going to show you how you make the phone connect to the extension inside the PBX. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to connect to the web administration interface. And from here, I'm going to go to Applications, and then I'm going to go to Extensions. So at this business, we have seven people. We have a boss, we have a receptionist, and then we have five other employees. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set this up where we have an extension, which is going to be a generic Chan SIP device. All of these phones that I'm setting up are going to be basic SIP devices. So we hit Submit. Now, for the user extension here, we're going to choose a user extension. We're going to start off with 101, and we're going to make 101 the receptionist at this business. Now, I don't know the receptionist's name yet, so I'm just going to type in receptionist. But one thing that you may want to do if you want your customers to be a little bit happier is figure out their names and actually program them into the phone system before you, you bring it to them. And it's just, just these little touches that are going to make them like you a little more. So I'm going to have to figure out what all these people's names are. But until I do, we're just going to label this receptionist. Now, we scroll down. And all of this here is, seems fine. Outbound concurrency limit is going to be the maximum number of outbound simultaneous calls that an extension can make. I might, I might up this a little bit just to five. This is meant as a security precaution. So let's say somebody hacks into your system. God forbid somebody destroys everything. They can't set up one phone to make 1,000 phone calls at once and just destroy your network. But at the, so you, I would say that three is a little bit on the low side. I'm not saying that we're ever going to get to a point where one person is making five or seven calls at once. But I'm just to be safe, I'm going to set it at five. Everything else here is fine. Now... What I'm going to do over here is set up the secret. So the secret is going to be the password. And the, the new versions of free PBX actually set up a secret that is very secure by default. So it used to be by default that you typed in your password for your phone. Now, by default, it creates a very convoluted password for your phone just to make it a little bit more secure. Now, I'm going to make this a purposely vague password just because it'll make it easier to do the videos, which is YouTube1234. This is an awfully god-awful insecure password, but it's, again, I'm not going to be using this in the real world, so I don't care.
Now for NAT, I'm also going to set NAT to no because all these phones are going to be within the local network. I don't have any plans for this setup to have a branch office that's also going to attach to this PBX. If that is something you're doing, then you're going to want to read about how all these options work and how to set up free PBX behind a uh, NAT to function with phones that are outside of your network. And that, that's, a, that's a topic for another video. But I'm trying to keep this very basic here. Now, as you scroll down, you're going to see more options here, such as you know recording. And again, I'm going to set this to yes over here. I want this extension to record. On-demand recording will enable it. And there's also here, there's, uh, there's uh, user manager settings for how you're going to log in and check your voicemail. Now, for voicemail password, again, I'm just going to set everything to the same thing to make this entire video very easy. So I just enabled the voicemail here. We're going to keep scrolling down. And that's just about that. Ah, if, if we have to set a voicemail password with digits. So I'll just set it to 1234. For the love of God, don't set 1234 as your password, but I'm just doing that just to make this quick. So let's just scroll through all of our settings here. All right, everything looks good. Now we're gonna add the rest of the extensions here. So I'm gonna add 201, employee two. We're gonna scroll down. We're gonna set the secret again, our nice insecure but easy to remember extension just for the length of this YouTube video. Now also, here's the important thing that I, I want you to think about before we get to the voicemail section. What I want you to do is I want you to think about how people use voicemail. I want you to think about how an office is going to use their voicemail. So let's say that you have four or five people that answer the phone as a receptionist. There is no reason for each one of those individuals to have their own voicemail box uh, because whoever's going to show up that day, they may have a job of checking the voicemail. Again, this is the type of thing that you're going to have to ask them. You're going to have to ask them how they work, how their customer service works before you set up any of this stuff. I'm, I'm going to have one general voicemail for customer service, and then I'm going to have a second voicemail that's just for the boss. If I make a voicemail for each individual receptionist, it's very likely, or each individual employee, it's very likely that it's going to become very, very confusing. Where do the voicemails go to? Who is supposed to check what voicemail box in the middle of the day? If a call is, it's just easier to have one voicemail box for all the customer service. Now, the reason you have a separate one for the boss. Let's say the boss wants to fire the receptionist because the receptionist is not doing a great job. Let's say somebody calls uh, and responds to the job ad. You know, you're going to want that call to not go to the boss's voicemail instead of going to the receptionist's voicemail because if the receptionist goes through her voicemail and sees that there's 15 people that are calling about applying uh, for a front desk position, you know, she's going to know that she's about to get fired. So here I'm going to have a basic little configuration for a small office where there's going to be one voicemail for the customer service and another voicemail and another number set up for the boss's main line. So all these other extensions here are not going to have voicemail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it so that if you call that, that extension, it's going to go to the receptionist's voicemail. We're going to set this up to go over there. All right, now we're going. So we're just going to keep adding down the line, and I'm most likely going to fast forward this part because it's going to be boring. You may want to have each person have a specific voicemail if you actually want to leave them messages as to this is what I want you to do today or you want to be able to forward a specific person a specific call or a customer, let's say a customer calls in and you forward them to a specific department. Then you may want to have a specific, you, you, at that point you may want to have voicemails for that person, but you just have to make sure that they know to check their voicemail as part of their job. I'm going to be setting up the ring groups here later so that the ring group itself is always going to go to one voicemail box if there's an issue.
Okay, so now we're going to set up the boss's extension, and this one's going to be set up a little bit different because he's going to have his own private voice mailbox. We're also going to wind up setting him up with his own phone number. So there's going to be two phone numbers that get used here. One of them is going to be the general customer service phone number, and the second phone number is going to just call his line. So the customer service line is not going to ring his phone, but the main line, the, his line, will ring his phone and nobody else's. So we have to create a voicemail box for him. So this is going to be his voicemail. So we have to make sure that I clicked enable on his. I didn't. And again, for the love of God, don't use the password 1234. So it's going to be his voicemail. Then we hit submit and apply config. Again, the way you set this up, the way you set up how the voice mailboxes work, that depends on your specific organization. In my organization, I don't want each individual person to have the responsibility of checking their voicemail. I want one person to have the responsibility of checking any missed calls or any, any type of voicemail. It's going to be different with different businesses. Some businesses want to have a general voice mailbox for customer service, but then for each individual user to have their own voice mailbox for internal memos, or maybe, again, if there was a reason to forward a specific customer to a specific person, you have to figure that out from whoever it is you're setting up the system for. But this is how I'm setting it up. It's not the only way to set it up by any means. It's just the way I'm setting it up based on what I was uh, requested to, uh, what I was asked to do. Now, next, we're going to set up something called ring groups. Ring groups are going to set which extensions ring and also where the phone calls go when they're not answered. So if a call to this number is not answered, then we send it to this mailbox. If a call to this number is not answered, then we send it to the boss's mailbox. If you call this number, then these phones ring. If you call this number, then these phones ring. We've set up extensions, so now we have phones that we can attach to the network, but when somebody rings a number, what's actually going to happen to them? For that, we need to set up ring groups. Ring groups, again, the, ring, the whole idea behind ring groups is when you ring this ring group, this group of phones will ring. When you call an organization with organizations that have uh, a lot of different users, when you call one phone number, very often there are more than one phone. There's more than one phone ringing. So, for example, at my business, we have uh, four people working here, and we have four phones. If you call my business phone number, it's not going to ring one person's phone. It rings all of our phones, and whoever picks up the phone first gets the call. So here we're going to set it up so that six phones ring when the customer service number is called, but not the boss's, and one phone rings when you call the boss's number, but not the other six.